Hi, welcome to Alaska Rural Homestead. Uh, we're fixed to start doing some chores. Uh, we've got the hogs behind us, we're going to feed those. And from there, we're going to show you our new baby bunnies that uh, Fiona had. And from there, a little bit of gardening. So, quickly, a shout out to Shed Wars 21 and our Shed Warriors everywhere in the world. Um, hey, it's starting to warm up in Alaska here, as you can tell. Uh, there's tons of mosquitoes out. Uh, it's breakup, so it's gooey as all heck. And uh, yeah. The other thing I want to touch on was, is uh, hey, we've seen some bears out here already on the homestead. Uh, we won't be getting our bees until uh, next week, and so that's a good thing. Hopefully the bears will move on, um, but we're more aware of what's going on and uh, trying to get the wife in the habit of carrying a pistol with her now, so hey. <laughs> it is a really nice, clear, beautiful day. It's 50 degrees out right now, and it's break up, and we've got our spring break up attire on with big boots <laughs> waterproof of course <laughs> so come along with us as we get some chores done around the homestead here this is like their favorite treat marshmallows And with spring breakup, they have their own little wallow going. So much for the marshmallow. <laughs> So much for me not being pig. <laughs> so this is a combination of our grain and uh, goat milk. And uh, as you can tell, I love it. Now this is our big boar. Uh, we've said this time and time again. Uh, <laughs> this is JD. Now uh, he's uh, fully intact and he does have tusks. They're about an inch and a half long. And I think I've got a photo. So if I do, uh, I'll put that up and you can see what those tusks look like. But he's friendly. We've raised him that way because, you know, Last thing you want to do is get ate up by a boar. Our sow's the same way. She's uh, she's friendly enough. Uh, they do become protective when they have their little uh, piglets, but other than that, you know, uh, just good old good old babies. And he's starting to shed some of this. We'll go check up on uh, Charlotte here. Like I said, she's due first or second week of June. And all I'm doing is just kind of rubbing my hand along her belly there and seeing if I feel any movement. Good girl. Let her know that I'm here so she's not surprised. Give her a scratch so she knows it's me. Rub her back. Rub her butt. She loves that. Yep, baby. And just gently feel down her belly here. Uh-huh. A little bit of movement in there, so she's got some piggies. Good girl. She loves her ears and her right in between her ears scratch real here. Like I said, we raise them friendly because we have to be in here with them, and as you can tell, it's kind of tight and muddy. Uh, we don't like mean animals, so they're treated real well. Um, can't do anything about the water here. It's break up like we talked about. So the ground underneath is frozen. Won't let the water drain out from all the snow yet. It's slowly warming up and it's slowly draining, which of course produces a crap ton of mosquitoes, which they don't like either. So uh, we're fixed to get her separated here probably the next day or two. Let her have the next month by herself to calm down and fatten up even more. 
and uh, we'll go ahead and give her a shot so she's up to date on everything. Other than that, we're going to move on to the bunnies, so stick around. Okay guys, so here is Fiona's lovely bunnies. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bunnies. She's a good mama, aren't you, Fiona? Yes, you're a good girl, Fiona. Yes, good girl. Good girl, Fiona. All right, guys. So we're going to take a look at our meat birds. Now this water has some of our own organic honey in there. So we're going to start getting some of the meat birds in here. And they're about uh, a week and a half old. So I'm getting ready to make some wonderful sun tea. Um, these are just some herbs that I've grown on our homestead here. Okay, so I've got all my herbs ready to go in for my tea. I've got my cinnamon stick here, and I've got my spearmint, my hops, and my stinging nettle. And not only is this really refreshing in the summertime, but it is really good for you. Spearmint and mint is really good if you have an upset stomach. Uh, the hops kind of gives it a sweet taste and my stinging nettle is not only really good for you, it's high in vitamins and minerals. So I'm going to get this filled up and stick it out in the sun. Hey guys, so we got the rabbit manure all tilled into the garden beds here and rabbits are so useful for a small scale homestead. Not only are they uh, great for meat purposes, but they are really great if you don't have a lot of room and a lot of acreage on your homestead. And they produce this great manure that you can put directly into your garden bed. So we are getting ready to put some cold crops in here now that it's warmed up a little bit. We try to utilize the space that we have on the homestead. Even though we have several different garden beds around the homestead, we really like to get the most out of our garden space just because we have a really short season of growing. So today we're going to be sowing uh, beets and carrots and some cabbages. So tell them about your uh, castings and your glacier dust and why you use it. It's, we don't have worms in our area. I like to use worm compost and then I also use a glacier dust into my garden beds. So this glacier dust is basically uh, minerals, trace minerals, that um, your vegetables take out of the soil and after repeated growing in the same area, those minerals are gone and your food starts to taste bland. So this is something that if you put in back into your soil, uh, it really makes the vegetables taste better. So, so in this bed, we are going to be putting cabbages, uh, we're going to be putting carrots just because they're a cold crop and our soil's warmed up enough to where we're just going to cover this with plastic and we want to prevent uh, any frost that might get onto the vegetables as they now grow. Now when she says that uh, the ground is warmed up, let's clarify this. Right now the average ground temp in a raised bed like this is about 55 degrees. So we're not uh, talking major heat down here. So you have to plant a crop that's really cold tolerant.
And the great thing about using glacier dust in your bed is that it is super good for your vegetables. It gives it a really wonderful taste to your fruit and vegetables. And uh, the worm castings that we're going to be adding to the garden beds uh, will not burn your plants at all either. So right now we are going to make some simple trenches here. So we're going to put cabbages in this row. Uh, we're putting a cold, hardy cabbage seed in here. And then we're also going to be putting, what, cabbages in this one? Cabbage, 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 and then in between we're going to add our um, uh, companion crops. Uh, Will it grow, uh, says. Uh, he puts sand on top of his. We don't like sand um, in our area. We like regular planting dirt, and what we do is we've got uh, Alaska dirt here. This is actually Alaskan dirt, um, and it's been broke up all nice and ready to go. It's been inside, so it's gotten nice and warm, <laughs> so it actually spread. And so we just take this, and we spread this over our trenches. Have you got your trenches done, hun? Yeah, they're done. All th or your two? Yeah, they're done. Oh. Or wait. No, I didn't get that one done. Okay, so finish the second one. I've got okay. my trench on the outside cabbage, of this huh? one here. Uh, it works. Cabbage is always good. It makes good sauerkraut. And the other great thing about us growing a lot more food is so we can supplement some of our feed costs for our animals. Because pigs really love to eat. <sighs> All right, guys, so we're finished planting that one garden bed outside, and we got some good cold weather crops in there, and we've got, we've got some of my nice tea that I made earlier, and it is 7 o'clock, and it's way past dinner time, <laughs> so Mark is going to get busy making some dinner, and... We are having moose steak tonight, and we are having the rest of our potatoes that we store down in our cold root cellar. So don't forget to look for that video on how we store a lot of our uh, vegetables and whatnot down in the root cellar. So don't forget, give us a thumbs up, <laughs> subscribe, give us comments about what you like, what you don't like, and if you have questions, and most of all, God bless everybody and take care of yourselves. See ya. Bye now.